When you're falling, all you can hear is your heart. As it appears that someone pushed Ben to his death, but the true question is, was it a mistake or was it on purpose? Now, this episode also poses some very important questions from our main characters, such as, should we be concerned about Oliver's health moving forward? What does it mean for Mabel, who continues to show her shining slash sick sensibilities in talking to the dead, and Charles, well, just how long has he been ruining kids' hopes and dreams, and more importantly, will it catch up to him? Welcome back everyone, as we are here to discuss and break down Only Murders in the Building Season 3 Episode 2 titled, The Beat Goes On. Now, there is a lot to break down about this episode, but first, I want you all to share your thoughts in the episode, such as Easter eggs or any clues or any deeper meanings you also away from this episode in the comments below. And if you haven't already, go check out my episode one breakdown, but we are here to talk about this second episode, and there is so much to go over. With that being said, full spoilers ahead. Cut back three months before Ben's death as he's rehearsing a scene with Oliver and questions the story of death rattle as Oliver promises Ben he's gonna kill it. Now, obviously hindsight's 2020, pretty poor choice of words there, Oliver, but flash forward to present day as Oliver learns the news that the play is officially being called off by his producers, but they don't have the courage to say it in his face as Oliver isn't ready to call it quits quite yet. Now, calling it quits was a very big theme for Oliver in this episode, and I'm afraid to admit it, but it might not only hurt him in the future of this show, but I think it might actually get him killed. More on that a little bit later in today's breakdown. Meanwhile, Mabel is watching reruns of her favorite show starring Ben, which was Girl Cop, which had him running around with frosted tips. Man, you gotta miss those early 2000 hairstyles as we see that she actually took photos of his dead body the night that he died. And suddenly, Ben's character from the show Ghost pays her a visit, and later in this episode, we actually find out why this version of Ben is appearing to her in this form. Now, we know this isn't the first time we've seen her talk to Ghost as she did this to Tim back in season one. As she's expressing her feelings on being lost and not having purpose as she's approaching her 30s. You know, the the more I think of Mabel's backstory, it's actually really tragic. She lost her dad at a young age, two of her closest friends died, and one of them went to jail and death just can't seem to break away from her. It'll be really interesting to see how this season handles her character, and I have a feeling that maybe by the end of all this, she might be a detective when it's all said and done. Cut back to Ben, the ghost, giving her words of encouragement and telling her she'll eventually find her way, but also she'll end up figuring out who killed him. The real question is, what's the deeper meaning of these conversations with the dead people that she has in her mind? Does it speak to her feeling closer to death more than feeling alive? Or since being in love with mysteries and murder mysteries like the Hardy Boys when she was a kid, is she just obsessed with murder? Not like in a killer way, but let me know what you all think about, like I said, Mabel's shining slash six sensibilities and what it can mean for the character moving forward. Now, the trio decides to go to Ben's funeral together, but they all have their own agendas. Mabel's trying to find clues to see who killed Ben. Oliver hopes to speak to the producers and convince them to keep the show going. And Charles just doesn't want to look suspicious because we know he had beef with Ben. As the crew learns that they weren't that close to Ben as they thought, especially Oliver, as they've been placed in the overflow section 3 where all the strangers sit right below the actual funeral which is being televised on television. Now, Mabel meets Ben's security guard by the name of Greg, who has his eyes on the crew of the show, Kimber, Ty, and Bobo, as we see that he invites Mabel to look at the files, which he hasn't shown to the cops because he doesn't trust him. As soon as he said that, my can't trust him radar immediately went off. As Oliver attempts to make his way upstairs, Mabel accepts the guard's invite and brings Charles along with her. Now the guard shows off his shrine of all the things he's collected from Ben's career and it is revealed shortly after that that he is a super obsessive fan and he eventually knocks out Mabel and Charles. And while all that was going on, we see Oliver talking to Maxine, who's a critic, and he tries to convince her to share a raving review to the producers, but he doesn't have any luck doing so. And again, 
not having luck, not having to give up is a big theme with him in this episode as he learns that her review wasn't going to be a great review. Matter of fact, she says that it was one of his worst things that he's done to date. And speaking of worst things, she goes a step further and says that Ben's performance in the coffin is better than his performance on stage. Whew, she's a pretty tough critic, y'all, but she promises to never share her review. I'm wondering if we're going to get more of Maxine moving forward. Let me know what you all think about that character in the comments below. Now we cut back to the scene with Oliver and Ben who are having a really good heart to heart about him being his authentic self and redoing his line about listening to his heart which was cut perfectly between Oliver having to appear to listen to his own heart which is having an attack right now. Back with Charles and Mabel, who is handcuffed at this point, as Charles tries to put a positive spin on the situation, which is, hey, at least it didn't take us eight episodes to find out who the killer was, which I thought was hilarious, but we all know as an audience, that wasn't the killer. It is way too easy for us to get who the killer is this far in the season. Now, Mabel tells Charles why Girl Cop meant so much to her as a kid, because as we learn, when her dad died, her mom didn't get out of bed for months, and Ben's character in the show got her through some really tough times, and her and her mom were actually able to bond over the show. I really love this scene here, and I thought it was a really great character moment for Mabel, followed by Charles telling her his truth, which was he was the one that actually caused trouble between him and Ben. As he goes into details, we learned that during the Brazo days, Charles got Ben fired on his first job when he was eight years old based on a very poor table read, which stuck with Ben all these years and explains why he was uncomfortable in episode one during the rehearsals and table read. So all these years later, Ben kept all this animosity kept inside of him and he promises Charles that he was going to make this production a living hell for him just to get revenge on him. Quick side note, do we know who Charles was referring to in season two's finale when he told Ben, stay away from her? Who exactly was her? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section. I'm thinking it's Mabel, but I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments below. As we learn that Greg the Psycho fan isn't a security guard, to no surprise, but he's actually a chef or a cook at a steak restaurant, which I wouldn't be surprised if we end up learning that he actually worked there because it's Ben's favorite spot to get steak, or maybe there's more personal connections to that actual restaurant. I think that's something we should keep an eye out for. As he's doing all of this because he believed Charles Charles killed Ben, which eliminates him as a suspect, but just as he was ready to torch the confession out of Charles, in comes the police. Now this is where we meet the new detective by the name of Biz Wass, who's actually covering for Williams. Now we wrap up the episode with learning that Oliver did indeed have a heart attack and he needs to reduce his stress, and if this happens again, things might not end well for him, which to me is definitely foreshadowing for the character. As Mabel expresses to Charles why Greg isn't the killer, as the true question is, who handkerchief was Ben holding when he died? As they theorize how Ben could have ended up with it when he was pushed down to the elevator, which, stick with me here, this may be a bit of a stretch, but what if KT might have something to do with this, as it appears that KT works for the hair and makeup, the set design, and the costumes, so she would have access to his handkerchief? Let me know what you all think about that. Now, I don't know how I feel about this exact scene. It made me laugh with and at the scene at the same time as Mabel, Will, and Charles perform the episode's title to Oliver, which of course was all in his head, as they want him to relax and stop. But Oliver, being Oliver, takes this moment and does the complete opposite of this hallucination as he calls Donna with a new idea for Death Rattle as a musical. Death Razzle Dazzle. It has a little ring to it, I can't lie. But Oliver shares the news with Charles and Mabel as they tell him that the killer is most likely involved in the show and they are officially back to doing the podcast. But Oliver doesn't take this opportunity to tell them his recent health scare. Now, honestly, overall, this episode to me wasn't as good as episode one, but I did have some big takeaways. I do think that this episode did a good job of laying the groundwork for our characters overall, dealing with their issues. Mabel, she find purpose while solving this crime of Ben's murder. Charles, can he maybe not crush kids' dreams and their hopes? But seriously, I don't know if there's much going on with Charles right now, but I'm okay with that considering that his character had a lot of 
of character stuff in season one and two, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get more of Charles moving forward in this season. But Oliver, is he going to be able to break this curse with terrible shows going horribly wrong? But also, should we be concerned about his health moving forward? I think we should. Now to wrap things up and give you guys my updated suspect list, I still have Loretta as number one, even though she wasn't in this episode. I'm going to go ahead and add KT to the mix with everything I said a little bit earlier. But here's another new set of characters that had me thinking. What about the producers Donna and her son Clifton? What if they had been killed? Now follow with me here. Last episode, I compared them to like the new version of Theo and Teddy. But think about this. What if they're having money issues very similar to them and they agreed to fund this project only for them to want it to end to maybe get some type of huge insurance claim because their lead star was killed? It might be a bit of a stretch, but that's kind of where my head's at with those two characters right now. Also, I was thinking about the mystery so far this time around. While Tim had a personal connection with Mabel and Bunny obviously knew Charles and Oliver for years, at first I was thinking, well, this particular death of Ben isn't that personal compared to the first two seasons, but after learning how important Ben's show was to Mabel, makes me think that the killer might have some past ties potentially to Mabel and also of course to Ben, and this is where my wild theory comes from. What if the co-star from Girl Cop might be the one that killed him? Let me know what you guys think about that. But one last theory, one last suspect. What about the guy that spoke at Ben's funeral? I believe his name was Michael. I don't know if he was a manager or maybe an old co-star. To know a little bit more about Michael, let me know what you all think about that. But hey, that's my suspect list. That's my breakdown and review of the latest episode of Only Murders in the Building. So make sure to share all your theories, your Easter eggs, your deeper meanings, favorite moments, least favorite moments in the comments below. I really appreciate you all watching today's review like i said up top if you missed my episode one breakdown you can see that on the screen right now also if you enjoyed today's commentary consider liking sharing subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell and also don't forget to check out my playlist of all my other reviews for this show you all are great and i'll catch you guys next week for episode three